This was posted way back in 2013 by SB Laxman. Pop that up for a moment. I will try to put all these and either get them in the show notes or on my forums, forums.hex.press, uh, just so that we can try to save these. So from 2013, SB Laxman posted, a few days ago, I posted a thread asking for advice on a hex crawl. Thanks for the replies, by the way. After I had made my map, I started to fill out with pre-planned encounters, but was a little disappointed not to be able to find a nice non-combat event generator to go along with random encounter generator tables in the DMG slash Monster Manual 2. So then I made one myself. And since it exists, I figure I'd put it up just in case it might be useful to anyone else. It is certainly not a set in stone table. So if there's any criticisms or additions that any have, please share them, of course. The idea is for a small hex scale exploration, one to five mile. So this could be used for any overland movement adventure. It is assumed the DM will manually place any towns, cities, and dungeons. If castles are manually placed, ignore the stronghold result. So basically you would roll a d20. And then if it's a just a rural area, you'd get basically... 15 and up is when you'd get things, landmarks, event, or monster. If it's patrolled, it changes things a little bit. And then we don't have a Borderlands column. There's a Borderlands column, but nothing in it. And then in Wilderness, there's a basically the, the odds just to shift. And then nothing signifies that the terrain is typical for the area. There's nothing special. And landmark is a unique feature of note. And they're going to have a landmark table below. An event is that the party comes across something unusual. Well, then there's an event table below. If there's a monster, we check for a monster using whatever tables we're going to use. And then the stronghold, the area has a stronghold and it basically comes back to the DMG for that. Come on, lads, fill tables with content. Yes, indeed. Well, there's a lot here. Maybe just never got around to it, to filling it up. So you can roll a d20. And we have for different climates or biomes, basically plains. I guess biomes is more accurate. Plains or scrub, hills or rough country, forests, mountains, deserts, and swamps. Battle sites, rivers, bridges, groves, ruins, burial grounds, farmers, campsites, caves. Evidence of some kind of recent fire, a stone circle, a dolmen, tall grass, or sinkhole. And then different ones. I'm not going to read through all of them, but it's a good list. You have, what, six different terrains. A bunch of different landmarks. Notes. Landmarks are features of special environmental hazards. Landmarks vary from interesting details to flesh out a setting to obstacles that may require long detours. The DM should ignore results that do not make sense or substitute appropriate results. Battle sites are remains of large scale battles. Then we get an events table. First is the type, which might be disease or curing, blessed, cursed, dead, out of place, trapped, enchanted, missing. Sighting weather or sudden weather. If you get one of the first nine, which is, then you roll a d10. And then if you get diseased, let's see, afflicted or carrying a non-magical communicable disease. Curing, whatever it is, treats or cures injuries or diseases. Trapped, it's, there's a trap set by hunters, adventurers, or monsters. Or missing, signs something should be there, but it's not. So you find a, a depression in the ground where maybe some kind of stone once sat, but the stone is not there. And perhaps... You think to yourself, oh, isn't that interesting? What used to be here and why is it not here anymore? And then if you get 10 a sighting, you check this table, table marked Roman numeral two for what the, what type of, essentially it's a kind of evidence or remain or traces. And then if you get 11 or 12, you check the, check the weather column, which is the third one. And then someone else responded to that and posted a link to another, another blog. Oh, I guess we could check out what did Gnome Stew have posted in 2012. Oh boy, a bunch more links. Uh, Daniel said he could just cut off the top of those tables and run a D10. I think he's trying to do is have, uh, I think the reason why he has those in there is basically, it's almost like what, what we do is, you know, if you're rolling for an encounter every turn, you don't necessarily want there to be an encounter every turn. So you have 50% of the time there's no encounter and then you know, you're kind of setting the odds. So I think he's trying to do that to space out. So you might roll for every hex, but they're not necessarily, he doesn't necessarily want something in every hex. So he, he's he's creating some amount of hexes that are just regular terrain without anything special inside them. But if you meant to always have one of those landmarks, some kind of landmark in the hex, then yeah, cut if you could cut off the 10 that are just basically empty. But I think for that person in their uh, configuration, that empty is a feature, not a, you know, a mistake. But yeah, they could change. You could change the die type to put more or less empty spaces. 
All right, I'm just going to, I don't want to get too caught up in here. Oh, this is it. Oh, wow. It's only four re replies. I created a PDF. Let's see. I got, I can't, is this still going to be active? Wah, wah. Yep, that one didn't make it. Let's see what happens if we go here really quick before we head back. So this is a wilderness encounters with random terrain features. I'll post a link to this as well. And remember, this stuff is old, so some of it isn't going to be available anymore. Like I just found when I tried to go to that person's PDF. Hopefully the text, we can, it, it's constructed in the text so we can at least see what it was. There's the link to that. This was posted by Bo Bloated Blowfish in 2012. Greetings. For some time, I've been trying to create a set of wilderness encounter tables that were broken down by the various terrain types that are found in my world. But I wasn't satisfied with just monsters because my campaign has been designed using an early 1977 micro sandbox concept, i.e. building outward from a single starting point of interest. In this case, the bloated blowfish tapper. Because of that, I wanted tables that would be dual purpose. Namely, A, used to help fill out the world as the players adventured using both monster and random terrain features. B, used to inspire me to create points of interest as I expand the world. Because let's face it, any DM who creates a world wants to enjoy the journey as much as his players, or in my case, even more. They don't have every single possible terrain feature, but serve as a basis to help. Sadly, though, I struggle for some time to quantify features the table might refer to, like ruin, giant tree, coral reef, swamp lights, etc., and more importantly, how best to reference subtables properly. Then while browsing the 3W, I stumbled across this post over at NWorld. So I grabbed the content and edited the format to fit my 1E game and finished by adding a few new tables slash items that fit my campaign and called it done. Note these are best based on my campaign. So while you may want dinosaurs, more random terrain features, or any other odd thing, you are free to use, ignore, adjust, abuse this PDF as you see fit. Included below is a bit of information with screenshots of the finished 1E Wilderness PDF. And I'm actually surprised these are still, still sitting on Photo Bucket. We have a frequency... Ooh, some of these dice. 1d8 plus 1d12. We get some numbers. We get some percentages, frequency. Then there's a d100. I guess it also gives us percentages and frequency. That's for us, oh, just for frequency. Okay. And then a layout in the encounter. More frequencies. Bottom page one terrain for table referencing. Terrain. 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 All right, so we get a bunch of charts, but it doesn't look like we're getting all the charts. Oh, and it's not going to be there. Wah, wah, wah. I wonder if this, this blog is still extant. Maybe there's some other link to that, because it seems kind of cool. Oh, wait a minute. One E Wilderness Encounters. Oh, is this still here? Yes! We have liftoff first. Let's download that bad boy. For it vanishes again. So this is 1E Wilderness Encounters version 4.0. And this one is still working. So feel free to grab it. Grab it before it disappears again. You never know with this stuff on Dropbox if it's going to vanish in the blink of an oi. There it is. <laughs> like it's got the year like an almanac. 2017's first edition Wilderness Encounter Tables version 4. All right, I'm ready for this. I hope you folks are ready for this. Because this might be, well, 15 pages, and I'm at 30 minutes. We'll see. We'll see how far I get. P. Giants says, I'm working on a setting taking influence, influence from the Gygax Challenge with this initial town called Darwin, leaning into the survival of the adaptable as an idea. That's cool, Pete. I, I'm down with that. I am down. All right, so here are these tables, or some of this stuff. Uh, I, okay, so this is kind of, I think this is, so all right, I want to say... But this is like a table of contents. So table one's for alpine or mountain, two for coastal, three down the line, so on and so forth for all our different terrains, including subterranean, which is a nice touch. We have our monster reaction table. Interesting that they've got the numbers reversed. So they they go, which I guess makes, uh, no, I'm sorry, that's not, yeah, it is reversed, right? Because two, I usually think of the upper numbers as being nice and the lower numbers being nasty. But I guess here, if you're rolling from the, I don't know. I was going to say, really, from the monster point of view, angry is better. I don't know. But hey, they, they like them that way, so they put them in here for reference. Fair enough, Sir Author. And we have our encounter layout, which 
I'm not exactly sure how these tables are used. One that just gives us the frequencies. We have two tables. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. So we have a frequency table that gives us that D8 plus D12. And we have one that's D100, but they're not the same. I don't know if they're supposed to re respond to something differently. Then for... I don't know what that is. I guess maybe... <clears throat> I don't know if this is supposed to be just a summary of how the tables look. Let's get into a specific one, because I'm confused on this one. So table one gives us a... one. I guess one gives us... Okay, so it's the same. <laughs> All right, so we have a table. Let me see if I can let me see if I can suss this out. So table one is alpine or mountain. Got that one correctly. I figured that one out. So far, so good. Is a D100 table. In this D100 table, it appears to be essentially no. That's not even right. I was gonna say it's half things, half features, but that's not quite true. It's a mix. I want to say that maybe I think I get, I kind of think I get where they're coming from, where they've set it out where they're going to have, they're using these kind of frequencies in their table logic. So they're going to have things that are unique, very rare, and they're kind of noting, I guess, giving you a little bit of the percentages and things so that they can, uh, so that they can. You can kind of reference this to see what the common, how common certain things are showing up so that we could see. Let me see if this holds true. So we get, what's one of the numbers here? But these numbers don't all match up though, because I have 21 to 25 and we have 21 to 24. I'm not sure. I guess I'm not sure, but I guess it's basically your basic layout of it. I don't know. But anyway, in this case, the D100, you can get stuff from brown bears, displacement piece, but it's also physical things like, or I would, I should say locations. So you can get creatures and locations. So you get, you know, one to two is a brown bear, three is a displacement piece, four is ruins, five is a bluff, six to seven is a hamlet, eight is a mountain river, nine is a sphinx, then 10 to 11 is a structure, so on and so forth. And we get all this all through D100. And when you know, we need potential numbers are numbers appearing, then we get it. So... 21 and 24 is humanoids, and we roll 2d6 to see how many humanoids exactly there are. And then we have a table also for coastal, then for conifers, or conifer forests, for deserts, plains, heath, slash moor, hills, jungles, marshes, mixed forest, and then oceans, and also rivers or lakes or streams, and then subterranean. <clears throat> and we get some more tables. If we need to, if we have a stone altar, we need to find out the effect and the purpose. We've got that. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've got some animal traps. If you need an animal trap, we got uh, avalanche. And this is uh, lime, right? Barrel mounds, boulders, bogs, brambles, camps, cave complexes, shallow caves, caves, gorges, face circles. Ooh, there's a lot of stuff in here. So a whole lot of stuff. Ooh, hunting blinds, islands, poisons, rivers, ruins, ships. Whole other thing for structures. Swamp lights. Got to get your swamp lights. We even got a table of tornado table. Hey, you never know when you might need a tornado table. Gives you intensity, wind speed, and the type of damage. And water vines. It's always funny the stuff that people find super important. Like, yeah, like, when do I feel like I'm going to run into a tornado? Probably not that much, but hey, it's there. And for me, like, I don't know what a water vine is, but it's just kind of funny that it's not even just vines in general, but literally water vines. Though I don't see another table for land vines. I don't know, but that's, that's cool. Watch towers, walls, wrecks. Cool. So there you go. Grab this book. Grab it. A... It's good. A lot of good stuff. I don't, I still don't really quite know what these are used for, but maybe I, I think it's just to kind of give us a sense of what the odds are of things and how common different results are, but they don't use it everywhere. It's so not, not sure exactly, but if you need random features, I, I, I mean, look, guy, guy 75 challenge. You, you, you're looking for something to give you some inspiration for building out your hex map or coming up with your dungeon or anything. Throw some of this stuff in here. 
I almost wish that they would have had two kind of two tables fill out those pages and do one for features and one for creatures and you could just roll roll like a two two d one hundred or or d one hundred twice and then you could combine them for two things but super cool I'll definitely have to pull this out later for something and that's back on the bloated blowfish blanc unfortunately it doesn't look like they've done anything since 2017 that's it they posted they posted this document and then they pieced out so hopefully they're all right Next.